here is the setup that we have for Chris Hardeman's Graviflyer. Uh, right now I'm using the 125 kV max uh, high voltage power supply that Mark has at the lab. Uh, we've been using that to test the uh, maximum high voltage capacity of these things. Um, I'll get some zoom in close-ups here of Chris's setup. So this is the same scale that Chris used when he measured his weight loss. Um, he has a uh, iron uh, ferro metal here in the middle, uh, which is different than Alexi said, but I suspect that actually has increased his magnetic fields quite dramatically for my measurements anyways. Um, I really like these little high voltage arms that he's got going off that with the with the high voltage um, cable as well. That's that's a lot better than my setup. <laughs> um, he's also got these really fat DC motors that just are torquey as all get out. And even though they weigh a lot, they more than make up for it in the amount of torque that they can provide. Um, his ultrasound setup is quite interesting. It's like a pill bottle with a speaker that's not like a little tiny piezo but like a, a puck speaker whoops like a puck speaker in there and then he's also got some some lights coming out on the sides i think he was working on getting the tachometer set up on there in the meantime he had some of this reflective tape on these that i've since replaced that's new stuff that i put on um but that stuff ain't great uh <laughs> the high voltage likes to arc right through that thing. So it goes from the rotor up to the motor and then burns out whatever you have connected to that motor. Also not ideal. Uh, so I'm gonna have to take that guy off too and we'll just kind of guess at the RPMs for now, I guess. Um, coming down, so right now I have the bottom taken off so that I can replace that guy so that it doesn't keep arcing. Uh, this guy has 11 giga ohm, whereas the one that I took off only had like two or four giga ohm. Is the old one. So right now I have a similar setup as to what I got going on at my place with PVC pipe, so that it's free hanging and I can just observe the rotation and uh, counter rotation of this thing as it uh, fights with the eddy current. Um, for scope measurements, I brought to the lab, I brought my spectrum analyzer and that's how I've been able to identify all of the interactions occurring with the Tesla coil and the eddy current. I found some minor stuff of potential back EMF coming, but uh, since we haven't been able to do a full under test conditions setup yet with high voltage as well as everything else. Uh, haven't really gotten a good chance to, to get some real true readings and measurements off of this. Uh, we're also using the uh, cheapo signal generator that works amazing. Um, I'll get a little shot here of his Tesla coil. So I just have my 10x probe to the spectrum analyzer going down the throat. Uh, this high voltage lead he's got going under there, connected to the mid plate like so. Interesting, different than mine, probably better in some ways. Uh, and then for his circuit, what he's got going on here, he's got a little can transistor there. Let's see if I can, well that's a little two in 4070. Um, and then a little pot on here. Bring this around. That is a 10,000 microfarad 50 volt capacitor. And then he's got a 47 ohm up here to the pot, just like you're supposed to. He's got the uh, input voltage going down there to his primary, just like he should. It, it's only a, a two and a half turn primary. Um, quite interesting. You can see on there he's got uh, 2.66 megahertz no load. I measured his Tesla coil uh, first mode to be about 870 to 880 kilohertz. And then the second mode was at 4.37 to 4.4 megahertz. 
Um, that's with it connected to the mid plate. Without it connected to the mid plate, uh, just the test coil by itself is 770 kilohertz. 770 kilohertz and 2.2 megahertz. So I think, I think he wound his coil pretty darn close within 100 kilohertz of uh, the, the total resonance of the whole setup. Uh, adding in the gravel flyer only adds in 100 kilohertz for the first mode, but it's interesting that it doubles the second mode frequency. It's probably something worth looking into as well. So Falcon Space, uh, this is Chris Hardman, test rig. Right now I only have rotors and test coil and you can see how the high voltage bleed is arcing. Just due to the test coil. If I turn the test coil off, that arcing goes away. Not really noticeable on the bottom as much. 